Hey, this is Nico from Licks of the Beast, and as the title and thumbnail suggest, we're here for a very special unboxing. Now, I don't make too many videos like this, but there's something really, really, really cool in this box. And I wanted to share this moment with you because it's something that I've wanted for a long time, and it will probably make many appearances on the channel. Some of you already know what's in this box just by the size and the shape and the fact that I'm making a big deal out of it. For those of you who don't have a clue what it could be or why I seem so excited, what's in this box is both a piece of history and a time capsule. And it's in part responsible for some of my very favorite music ever recorded. Okay, so this box has been sitting here since it arrived yesterday and I feel like I'm gonna spontaneously combust if I don't get this open soon. So I'm just gonna shut up and open the box. My guy did a seriously good job packing this thing. Wow. And it's a good thing because it had to travel all the way from England to get here. We're getting close. We're almost there. This has to be the absolute best packaging job I've ever seen. UPS store, take some notes. It's gift wrap in Christmas wrapping paper. How appropriate. Because I feel like a kid at Christmas right now. This is, how amazing is this, seriously? All right, here we go. You ready? I'm not. Okay. Oh yeah. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Check this thing out. How awesome is this? So for those of you who don't know what this is, you're looking at a very special guitar amplifier. The Galen Kruger 250 ML. This is what Iron Maiden used to get that unique and futuristic guitar sound on the Somewhere in Time and Seven Son of a Seven Son albums. It's also been used on a bunch of other stuff, including Extreme's Porno Graffiti, some of the Fleppard's Hysteria, and even on the song The Touch from the 1986 Transformers movie. Okay, now let me plug this thing in because I'm obviously dying to try it out, and then I'll just mic it up real quick so that you can get an idea of how it sounds. <laughs> That's pretty damn cool, isn't it? Now, of course, I still don't know how to set this amp to get all those sweet somewhere in time tones just yet. So give me a little time to get familiar with it and I'll be featuring it on some upcoming videos and maybe I'll even make a dedicated video about it. So do let me know if that's something you'd like to see. These amps have long been out of production and many of the ones you find on the market tend to be pretty badly beaten up. So I've always been hesitant to pick one up, knowing I'd very likely have to go crazy finding someone who could restore it properly back to its original condition. So let me tell you about how this little gem ended up here, because it's a pretty cool story. A few weeks ago, I received a message on Instagram from a guy who follows the channel saying that he knows I've mentioned possibly wanting a GK250ML and that he was now selling his. So of course I said, yeah, send me all the details and I'll take a look right away. So it turns out that this guy, whose name is Mickey, plays in an English band called The Retro Rock Show, and he's also been working 
with a certain Mr. Tony Newton. That's the guy responsible for all of Iron Maiden's live recordings for 15 years. And he does stuff like the maintenance of Steve Harris's Barnyard Studios and, you know, safekeeping of Iron Maiden's old gear. So this app comes with a bit of a pedigree of sorts, which is really cool. But what made it even better for me is that it's been very well maintained and serviced. So for example, the original Pile speakers have been professionally refurbished with new rubber surrounds and wiring. The internal board has been fully cleaned and the capacitors have been replaced. This means I don't have to worry about things like blown speakers or cracking pots. And that is of course a pretty big deal when buying a vintage amplifier. But aside from all that, the most important thing for me when I'm buying gear, whether it be new or pre-owned, is the experience and the vibe I get from the seller. The original Ibanez destroyer that Sarah got me ended up being even more special because when we went to pick it up in Montreal, Tony, the original owner, ended up being a really great guy. And I truly believe you take some of that home with you whenever you buy an instrument. And it's the same with this amp. Mickey and I have been chatting back and forth and the fact that he's a really cool dude who is genuinely passionate about music made the whole experience so much better and because of that, I'm even more excited about this piece of gear and how I'll be featuring it on the channel. So Mickey, thanks again for having reached out, working with me to get this over here quickly and safely and for making this a fantastic experience all the way through. And to everyone, thank you all so much for watching and do stay tuned for more licks of the ML250. Cheers.